The Lord, my shepherd, I'll not walk. He maketh me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness in for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk to death's dark veil, you will, I fear none ill, for thou art with me in thy rod, and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foe. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my death shall be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening. This evening's Mass is being offered for Alfred Brothers. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <coughs> You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. There was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim. He married the daughter of Hilkiah named Susanna, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had fine garden adjoining his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. That year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, the Lord had said, wickedness came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges who were supposed to govern the people. 
These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had a case to be tried came to them there. When the people left at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. Every day the two elders used to see her going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences and turned away their eyes from looking to heaven or remembering their duty to administer justice. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, Susanna went in as before with only two maids and wished to bathe in the garden, for it was a hot day. No one was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. When the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, look, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. We are burning with desire for you. So give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you. And this was why you went and sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I am completely trapped, for if I do this, it will mean death for me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the two elders shouted against her. And one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. When the elders told their story, the servants felt very much ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband Joachim, the two elders came, full of their wicked plot to have Susanna put to death. In the presence of the people, they said, Send for Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. So they sent for her, and she came with her parents, her children, and all her relatives. Those who were with her, and all who saw her, were weeping. Then the two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears, she looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, while we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man because he was stronger than we, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. Because Susanna's accusers were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me and now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. 
all the people turned to him and asked, What is this you are saying? Taking his stand among them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination, without learning the facts? Return to court. These men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. Daniel said to them, Separate the men far from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of a wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent and acquitting the guilty. Though the Lord said, you shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death. Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this, under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, very well, this lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God has received a sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring the other. And he said to him, you offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, Beauty has beguiled you, and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you've been treating the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, Very well, this lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two, so as to destroy you both. When the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him, and they took action against the two elders, because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them, of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor. Acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus innocent blood was spared that day. Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter, Susanna, and so did her husband, Joachim, and all her relatives. And from that day onward, Daniel had a great reputation among the people. The Word of the Lord. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. 
Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I do not wish the sinner to die, says the Lord but to turn to me and live. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Early in the morning, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading and our gospel reading today are in contrast to one another. In the first reading, we have a woman who was accused of adultery, but she was innocent and she was condemned to death, but God sent Daniel to her rescue. In the gospel, we have a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery a woman who was guilty and the Pharisees and the scribes were looking for Jesus to condemn her. St. John tells us that they brought her to Jesus to test him. They had asked him what was to happen to test him. In other words, they weren't concerned about the woman. They weren't concerned about the sin that she had committed. And it sounds as if they had probably set a trap in order to catch her. It's interesting to note, it was like in her first reading, although in her first reading there was no young man. Where's the man in this? They caught her in the very act. How did he get away so easily? Their interest was not in justice. Their interest was instead in tripping up Jesus. 
their plan was if he says well the law of moses says to stone her to death then the people will turn against him because they will see he's not so merciful after all and if he says to let her go then the people will turn against him because he has gone against the law of moses they thought they had him as always when they tried to trip him up they thought they had him but jesus in his infinite wisdom being god said to them let the first among you who has not sinned cast a stone one by one were told from the elders on down they left knowing that there was nobody among them who could throw a stone at her because all of them had sinned Jesus says to the woman that he did not condemn her but we notice that he did not simply let it slide he was not indifferent to her sin he said go and from now on do not sin again in these contrasting stories we see the justice of god compared to the injustice of humankind humankind seeking to falsely accuse others for their own gain humankind seeking to condemn others for their own agendas collateral damage is what we call it today i guess that is not the way that God wants it in both cases the case of the innocent woman and the guilty woman they were for all intents and purposes dead condemned to death in the minds of the people But what does our gospel acclamation say to us? I do not wish the sinner to die, says the Lord, but turn to me and live. The church has given us this season of Lent as a time to turn back to God to turn away from our sinful ways and to live. In these last days of Lent, we build up to the great feast of Easter, the great feast of life. Let us reflect deeply on our own lives. Let us reflect on how it is we are to turn to God and to live how it is that we are to turn back to God away from our sins and live reflecting on the mercy of God reflecting on the love of God the God who did not spare his own son but allowed him to die in our place. Remember Sunday's gospel, the raising of Lazarus. Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb. And as we go forward in John's gospel, 
we see that Jesus took his place. Jesus calls us back to life, saying that he will die in our place to pay the price for our sins. And so we reflect on that love that God has for us, that love that should prompt us to turn away from our sins, to turn back to God, to respond to love with love. As the solemnity of Easter approaches to your friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized together with the entire world may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. That God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding in the catechumens who are to be initiated by holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. That peoples in need may find help, and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. that all who are afflicted or suffering temptation may be strengthened by his grace, let us pray to the Lord. That all of us may learn to distribute the fruits of self-denial for the good of those in need, let us pray to the Lord. For an end to this pandemic. O great Saint Rocco, deliver us, we beseech you, from the scourges of God. Through your intercession, preserve our bodies from contagious diseases and our souls from the contagions of sin. Obtain for us healthy air, but above all, purity of heart. Assist us to make good use of health, to bear suffering with patience, and after your example, to live in the practice of penance and charity, that we may one day enjoy the happiness which you have merited by your virtues. St. Rocco, pray for us. St. Rocco, pray for us. St. Rocco, pray for us. St. John, pray for us. Mary, under the title of the Immaculate Conception, Pray for us. St. Joseph, patron of Canada and the Universal Church, pray for us. St. Andrew, pray for us. St. Margaret, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, protect us. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church and turn with compassion the hearts that bow before you, that those who make chairs of the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that, preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of the bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministry to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's offer each other the Son of Peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. For thou art the sin of the Lord. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down and bless you. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that, living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every crime through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, Mass is in. The Lord is the God of my salvation. I trust in Him and have no fear. I sing of the joy which his love gives to me, 
and I draw deeply from the springs of his great kindness. Open our eyes to the wonders of his moment, the beginning of another day. The Lord is the God of my salvation. I trust in Him and have no fear. I sing of the joy which His love gives to me, and I draw deeply from the springs of His great kindness. Be with us, Lord, and we break through with each other to find the truth and beauty of each friend. The Lord is the God of my salvation. I trust in Him and have no fear. I sing of the joy which his love gives to me, and I draw deeply from the springs of his great kindness. When evening comes and a day of toil is over, give us rest, O Lord, in the joy of many friends. The Lord is the God of my salvation. I trust in Him and have no fear. I sing of the joy which His love gives to me. And I draw deeply from the springs of his great kindness. Take us beyond the vision of this day, O Lord. And my ways are I trust in him and have no fear. I sing of the joy which his love gives to me, and I draw deeply from the springs of his great kindness.